that Jesus shed for me way, way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power, for it reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley oh the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its soothes my doubts and calms my fears and and he dries all my tears the blood that gives me strength from the That gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. It will never lose. It will never lose. It's fine. Sabbath Church. It is indeed a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. I am very grateful to be here and very grateful to God for the privilege to stand before you. Also, I want to thank Pastor Lorenzen to take a seat as I occupy the, the podium. I am very grateful for this. And I also want to thank him for all the tutelage that he has given to us, the elders and the rest of Advent Fellowship. I want to thank Sister Nasia very much for this wonderful song. I love to hear Sister Nasia sing. She has a powerful voice. I, want, I always encourage her to allow the Lord to use her, that she can have a singing ministry for the Lord. I am very happy to be here. Also, I want to blend my voice to welcome you to the house of the Lord. It's not what it used to be, but nonetheless, we are grateful that we are here. And also, I want to uh, welcome those who are worshiping online or virtually as we worship God in spirit and in truth. I want to welcome you, and I'm happy that you are here, happy to see so many faces that we have not seen for a while. It seems like how many years since I've seen your faces. I want to say, brothers and sisters, I love Advent Fellowship. I love to work with Pastor Lorenzen and with the elders. And also I will say that this group of elders 
I've been, I've been an elder in, my, in, my, in, in the church for many years. From since the age of 21, I have served as an elder in the church. And this group of elders is the best group I have worked with. I must say that. We have a, a harmony in helping in the ministry. And then we don't have this back and forth going between us. We are always unified in helping in the ministry, in whatever capacity that we are called to serve. And I want to thank God for that. And keep us in your prayers, because sometimes the enemy don't like when things are going well. For what we thank God. Also, I want to recognize my son, Samuel, and his mother, my wife, who's viewing online. So I want to just to appreciate, uh, to, um, you know, notice that they are here. They are there, you know, listening. Just a few months ago, life was as normal as we knew it to be. Our children went to school. We came to church. We sat next to each other. We hugged and kissed as we expressed our Christian love and affection. Some wouldn't even take a handshake because we were privileged to extend or extending warm embraces to each other. We were able to visit our loved ones at the hospital. We were able to pay our last respects to those or to our loved ones who passed away. Countries were doing well economically. People were traveling, taking their vacations at will. Life was hard for some, but people worked and make ends meet. But in a short few months, our lives have changed drastically. Our world is facing a global pandemic, the coronavirus or COVID-19. Over 19 million positive cases worldwide and over 700,000 deaths. In the U.S. alone, have had over 4 million 500 cases and over 155,000 deaths. People are fearful because they have no idea what is coming next. Citizens of different countries are seeking answers and looking for solutions while world leaders are becoming compulsive liars, whether it is Boris Johnson or Donald Trump. Donald Trump was asked this week in an interview with John, Jonathan Swan on HBO, what does he, Donald Trump, has to say about a civil rights icon as John Lewis? His answer was, he did not really know John Lewis. And by the way, John Lewis did not come to his inauguration. Our world leaders are behaving like children and like teenagers, playing or testing nuclear, nuclear weapons like children playing with toys. Inevitable stress is produced when, when people are seeking for some type of normalcy and consistency between how they think life should be and what is the obvious reality. This global pandemic has brought with it public health crises, global economic upheavals, and widespread uncertainties. Even though the acute threat of COVID-19 may pass, life will not return to a complete normal as we knew it to be. The Apostle Paul told us in his pastoral letter to young Timothy, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. May I submit to us this morning or this afternoon, brothers and sisters, perilous time is here. And the only solution to all our problem is the blood of Jesus. Holy Father, 
I bend my knees and I bow my head and I submit my wills and my desires to you. I am nothing, dear God, but a sinful lump of clay needing your saving grace. I need you now, dear Master, because I am not worthy and I'm not able to speak your word. So please come now in the person of your Holy Spirit. And please grant me the true humbleness, the right demeanor, and the brevity of expression that only comes through the power of your Holy Spirit. And may your people be blessed today. As I open my mouth, dear God, I pray that you will set a watch over my mouth and guard the door of my lips. Touch my brain cells and touch my lips. Let humanity diminish and let divinity stand forth. And may your word be proclaimed today with power and conviction, and may somebody find Jesus today, I pray, in Jesus' name. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. The sermon is entitled, The Power of the Blood. If there is a message or a sermon that needs to be preached, from our pulpits to the church and to the world at, the, at this present time which we live in, that message is the triumph of the cross. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church of, in Galatia and he said in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. In Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is in the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. In our anatomy or in our physiological structure of our bodies, our blood is the only moving mechanism. Our flesh is stationary. Our muscles are stationary. Our organs are stationary. The only moving part of our anatomy is the blood in our arteries and our veins. Our blood moves every 23 seconds bringing oxygen, nutrients, and to bring cleansing to our physical bodies. The point is here, if our blood dries up, or if our blood stops moving, that means we are good as dead. There are many people who have died from wounds, even gunshot wounds, that, me, that they die because they lost too much blood. Blood is the central theme of the Bible. And the blood can be traced through the Bible because there is a scarlet thread that runs through the Holy Scriptures. For the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. God promised to recreate, to restore his original plan that God disturbed or interrupted by the presence of sin. And the key to recreate, the key to restore, and the key to redeem his creation is the blood, the blood of the Lamb of God. You remember when God told Abraham to offer Isaac, his son, as a sacrifice. When they arrived at the spot on Mount Moriah, Isaac said to his father, We have the wood. We have the fire. Where is the lamb? Abraham told his son Isaac, God will provide himself a lamb. God, brothers and sisters, will bring everything back into order through the blood of Jesus Christ, his lamb, the lamb of God. The apostle, the apostle John said in Revelation 5 and verse 9, and they sang a new song saying, 
Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us by thy blood. Because of the triumph of the cross, demons trembled. When you bow your head or you bend your knees in prayer, with a repentant and a contrite heart, and you just mentioned the name Jesus, and began to testify about the power of the blood, Satan, who is the chief of demons, has to flee. John wrote again in Revelation 12 and verse 11, And they, which is you and I, overcome him, that is Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of the testimonies. Listen to me, Christian friends. Satan does not fear you and me. There is nothing in us, mere human mortal beings, that terrifies the devil. But when you call the name Jesus, when you testify of the blood of the Lamb, demons have to flee. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood. Without the blood of Jesus, there is no power in prayer. Without the blood, there is no power in what we Christians profess. Without the blood, there is no life in preaching or power in preaching. Because the central theme of the gospel is the blood of Jesus Christ. We are not saved by having our names written on the church record. A faithful member in your church is a good thing, but it cannot and will not save you. Being able to sing as an angel or with an angelic voice is very good, but it cannot save you. We are not saved by religion or by relig religious rituals, but we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And without the blood, brothers and sisters, we are eternally lost. Let me tell you something, church. Just people of Christ. Let me show you in the Bible how evil religious people can be. Please turn your Bibles to the Gospel of John. And the chapter is chapter 18. We will read verses. 28 through 31. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 18. Verse 28 through 31. You have it say amen? Verse 38, 28 says, they then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves were not in the judgment hall, as they should be defiled, but, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him to you. Then Pilate said unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. Then the Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. They were so religious. They would not even enter Pilate's judgment hall. Pilate, the Roman governor, had to go to them. Because to them, had they entered Pilate's judgment hall, they would have defiled themselves. And so, they would not be able to eat the Passover in defile. But brothers and sisters, the man they brought to Pilate to be judged, to be condemned to death, was the true Passover. You see, from the inception of Jesus' ministry, the religious leaders had been planning to kill him. 
And the only reason why they couldn't touch, touch Jesus is because his time was not yet up. But when their time was up, permission was granted to them. They couldn't even wait for the morning to come. They came at night and arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Let me tell you something, church. You need to be careful with religious people because they can be very dangerous. Let us turn to another passage of scripture to see the works of religious people. Please turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 12. We'll read verses 1 through 4. Acts right after John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts chapter 12. Verses 1 through 4. What book did I say? And verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And they killed, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then, then were the days of the unleavened bread. Verse 4 says, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarrion of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth the people. Satan raged war against the church of the living God by using the grandson of Herod the Great, Herod Agrippa II. He killed James, the brother of John, the son of Zebedee, by piercing through him with a sword. When he saw the fact that he killed James, is the Jews, then he set out to get Peter. Religious people, brothers and sisters, the teachers of the law, the priests, the Pharisees, the same people, the same nation that God had chosen as his people. When Herod killed James, there the Jews were happy. And when, they, when he saw, when he, Herod, saw how happy and pleased they were, he sent for Peter. They put Peter in jail because it was, it, they put Peter in jail only because it was the Passover time. If it wasn't for the Passover time, they would have killed Peter instantly. But after the feast of the Passover, they planned to kill him. Religious people kill the apostles of Jesus. Religious people kill the early Christians. Religious people plunge the entire world into spiritual darkness for 1,260 years during the time of papal supremacy. And it will be religious people who will kill the servants of God in the last days. So being faithful in your religion is not enough. Religious, religion without Jesus, brothers and sisters, is extremely dangerous. Religion without the blood of Christ would become either a curse or a cult. We need to have a relationship with God. The triumph of the cross was a day of victory. It was a day of liberation. It was a day of celebration. The triumph of the cross was a day of emancipation for every sinner that is enslaved by sin. For the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 and 23. Satan is a, master, is, a, is a slave master and all of humanity was condemned and lost eternally. But the Lamb of God came. He died like a common criminal on the cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. But early resurrection morning, he arose triumphantly. He destroyed sin on the cross. He defeated death and Satan and he conquered the grave. And he brought liberty to everyone who will call on his name. That's why the Apostle Paul said in Romans 10 and verse 13. 
Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I remind you, Christian friends, there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is deliverance in the blood of Jesus. There is liberty in the blood of Jesus. There is freedom in the blood. There is salvation in the blood. If you call him, he will hear you. He will stop. He will answer. He will call you to him and he will set you free. We need to call on him like blind Bartimaeus. When they try to shut you up, when they try to silence you, call even louder. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. Because of the cross, we have eternal freedom. Freedom from fear. Freedom from guilt of the past. Freedom from depression. Freedom from spiritual poverty. Freedom from unforgiveness. Freedom from jealousy and envy. Freedom from all type of addiction and conditions. Freedom from self-esteem and insecurity. Freedom from the coronavirus. Hallelujah. For whom the sun set free is free indeed. If you are not covered by the blood of the Lamb, the Bible says who are, li who are living dead. John chapter 3 and verse 18 reads, reading from the New King James Version, He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is, already, is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, the Greek word for only begotten is monogenes, meaning he is one of a kind. He cannot be duplicated. He cannot be replaced. There is none like him before him, and there will be none like him after him, because he is the only begotten Son of God. He is the only way to God. And, and that way was made possible when he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. Listen to me and listen well. When we, will, when we will stand before the judgment seat of God, and by the way, news flash, no one shall escape the judgment. For the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus says, man shall give an account in the day of judgment for every idle word he shall speak, whether it's good or whether it's evil. The Apostle Paul said, we all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for everything we have done in the body. The wise man Solomon said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it is good or whether it is evil. So when we shall stand before, the, before God on judgment day, brothers and sisters, heaven will want to know what did you do with Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross? That is why Paul said in Hebrew 1 verse 9 and verse 22, almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, brothers and sisters, there is no forgiveness for sin. The cross is the central theme of heaven. The cross is the cause of human existence. The Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. The cross is the central theme of the universe. The cross is the central theme of Christianity. In the New Testament, Jesus gave us the communion service which symbolizes the cross where he shed his blood. He said in Matthew 26 and verse 28, For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sin. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve sinned 
And as a result, he, Adam, could not represent the human race anymore. Why? Because his blood was poisoned and became contaminated by the sin virus. He listened to his wife and did exactly what she told him, and he lost his dominion and his authority. What is sin? Sin is missing the mark. The Greek word for sin is hamatia. Hamatia means missing the mark or missing the target. The mark or the standard of holiness that is set by God for us to obey. We cannot on our own merit, either in our own strength, reach that mark. Because we are sinful, Hamatia, we are missing the mark of God, holiness. Sin is what we are by nature, what, in, what we inherited from Adam. The psalmist David said, Psalm 51 and verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Romans um, 3 and 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5 and verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed unto all, for all have sinned. So by nature, by natural birth, we are alienated from God. We inherited the, from, the first, from the first Adam the fallen nature of sin. And as a result, we are condemned and eternal death. But thank God this afternoon, brothers and sisters, through the second Adam, we are freed from eternal death to eternal life. And this is why when he came to the Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist, when John the Baptist saw Jesus walking towards him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Now, most preachers I have listened to have misquoted this verse of scripture. They read the text as if the word sin in John 1.29 is a verb. But the word sin here is a noun, not a verb. Follow me closely. The text says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin, hamatia, the noun, not hamatano, the verb, which is to commit sin. The Strong's reference number for the word sin in John 1.29 is 266, and, and the, which is hamatia. And the reference number for in First John 1, sorry, verse John 2 and verse 1 is 264, which is Hamatano. In, in 1 John 2 and 1, we read, My little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not, which is a verb, do not commit sin. And if you sin, Hamatano, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus the righteous. While we have been forgiven or we are forgiven for the act of sin that we commit, Jesus' death was not really for the act of sin, but for the nature of sin or the, or the condition that we are in. That is why the Apostle Paul said in Romans 8 and verse 7, the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Not even God who change the sinful nature. From the time sin or the nature of sin find its place in the universe, God's plan is to destroy it. God does not change the sinful nature in us, but rather he replaces it with the nature and the character of Jesus Christ. And when the time comes, which God have appointed to judge the world. If the sinful nature is found in us, the nature that has continually rebelled against God, if we are not covered by the blood of the Lamb, we will be destroyed with the sinful nature. 
sin came in this world by one man. And that one man is Adam. And to redeem the human race from the sin virus, God, sorry, but God has brought eternal, sorry, let me read that again. And to redeem, and to redeem man from the sin virus, which brought eternal death. Jesus, the second Adam, the blameless son of God, whom the sin virus had no power over, went to the cross to share his precious divine blood. And brothers and sisters, it is only the divine blood of God that can cleanse us from our sinful condition. Only the divine blood of God. Abel's sacrifice was more excellent than that of Cain because Abel's sacrifice was a sacrifice of blood. Hebrews 12, 24 says, To Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of the sprinkle that speaks better things than that of Abel. Blood, brothers and sisters, makes an audible sound to God. God asked Cain, where is thy brother Abel? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? God said unto him, what is it you have done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. The blood of Christ demands unity. The blood is the only part in the human anatomy that unifies the whole body. The reason why we are not all united as a church, it is because we are not covered or we are not all covered by the blood of Christ. The Apostle Paul says, we are many members, but one body, and we can only be united, brothers and sisters, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus prayed in uh, John 17 that we should be united. But I regretfully declare this afternoon that we have done a very poor job of unity. The church has, bought, has not been very unified. Religion divides us. Denomination divides us. Our opinion divides us. Church policies divide us. Church doctrine divides us. Our silly ideas divide us. Ethnicity divides us. Our skin color divides us. Even the country or the island we are from divides us. Let me tell you something, church. There is no black and white church. There is no St. Lucian church. There is no Grenadian church. There is no Trinidadian church. There is no Jamaican church. There is no my church, his church, and that church. There is only one church. The building, brothers and sisters, is not a church. We are a church. We are the church of the living God through the blood of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible, there is only one blood brought church, the church of Jesus Christ. We are of one body, one hope, one faith, one baptism, one Lord unified, unified, indivisible. Because there is no division at the cross. No division at the cross. We are a family of, or we are the family of the living God. That is why we call each other brother and sister. As men murdered the son of God on the cross, and his blood flowed to the ground, the blood speaks to God begging for mercy. Jesus, hence Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know what they do. They do not know what they do. On the day of atonement, now follow me closely, in the most holy place, the priest would sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat, having God to look through the blood before he can see the justice that is demanded by the law. What was really happening when the blood touches the mercy seat is, while beneath the mercy seat, the, 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 the law cries guilty, and the law is right. 
and the justice demanded by the law is eternal death. But the blood on the mercy seat cries mercy, mercy. The blood speaks to God and the judgment of God is paid. And instead of death, life. That is why the Apostle Paul said in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The blood, brothers and sisters, is not our prosecutor. The blood is our advocate. He is our lawyer. The blood is our counselor, our attorney. Standing before the supreme judge of the universe, pleading for mercy for you and for me. The blood is powerful, so powerful. That it can forgive your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins. There is a scarlet stream that flows through the Old Testament. It began in the book of Genesis when God killed the first animal to cover Adam and Eve. The principle that the innocent will die for the guilty began immediately after Adam and Eve sinned. Now, after they sinned, they realized they were naked. Before sin, they were both naked and they were not ashamed. Genesis 2 and 25. But after sin, they were naked and they were ashamed. And that is why Adam told God that he was afraid and he hid himself. The English word naked is used both before and after sin. But the Hebrew word but in Hebrew, sorry, they are two completely different words with completely different meanings. Naked before sin is Iram, which, is, which in a figurative, figurative sense means the state of innocence. In other words, they were covered with the robe of God's glory and righteousness, so they could not have any sin. But naked after sin is Aram, which is but which in figurative sense means one who has no possession. Meaning, after Adam and Eve sinned, they lost the robe of glory of the righteousness of God. Brothers and sisters, what sin will do? Sin will strip us of the glory of God. Sin will bring fear, and fear will put us to shame. That is why Adam said, I heard thy voice, and I was afraid. Sin will derob you from the blessings of God. Sin will strip you from God's protection. Sin will strip, out, strip us of our faith in God. Sin will strip us of the anointing of God. Sin will strip us of the joy and peace in God. Sin, brothers and sisters, will bring you to rock bottom. And unless you go to Calvary, sin will eventually kill you and you will be lost eternally without God. Now notice, Adam and Eve was clothed. They made clothes for themselves. So they were covered physically, but they were naked spiritually. Meaning, in our own effort to remedy our sinful condition, cannot work and will not work. The prophet Isaiah said in the 64th chapter and verse 6, we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness is as filthy rags. You may look well in your pretty dress and your fancy elegant dress. We may be well clad in our frippy suit, but without the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, we are all spiritually naked, condemned, and lost without God. What can I wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is that flow that washes white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And sinners plunged beneath that blood will lose all their guilty stains. There is a bomb in Gilead that make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead that heals the sinful soul. And that bomb 
is the blood of Jesus Christ. Now the scarlet stream continued with Cain and Abel. God accepted Abel's gift because it was a gift of blood. The scarlet stream continues. Many centuries passed and then came the flood of Noah. The first act of worship after the flood was a sacrifice of shed blood. As time continues, sin seems to prevail. So God called Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. There on Mount Moriah, God provided himself a lamb. Again, blood was shed. 400 years later, Jacob, was, Jacob had 12 sons, but he loved Joseph more than, more, more than the other sons. Ten of those sons turned against Joseph because of his gifts and his coat of many colors. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites. Upon arriving in Egypt, a man by the name of Potiphar bought Joseph. Joseph became the chief servant in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's desperate housewife attempted to seduce Jacob, Joseph, sorry, but Joseph rejected her. Now she couldn't handle the, the rejection, so she had him thrown in prison. From prison, Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt. The Bible says Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, loved Joseph. In the process of time, Joseph's family moved to Egypt. The Bible says in Exodus 1 and verse 7, And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was full of them, or full with them. Then Pharaoh died, and the next Pharaoh, the Bible says, did not know Joseph. And the Egyptian enslaved the children of Israel. Exodus chapter 1, 11 to 14 says, Therefore they, the Egyptians, set over the children of Israel taskmasters to afflict them with burdens. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And the Egyptians were grieved because of the children. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in bricks and in all manner of service in the field. In all the service wherewith they made them serve with vigor. But the deliverance came by killing a lamb and applying the blood on the doorposts of their houses. The night when the slaughtering, slaughtering or death angel passed through the streets of Egypt, he was commanded to kill all the firstborn, man and beast. But when he saw the blood, hallelujah, come on somebody, help me. When he saw the blood, when God sees the blood, he will pass over you. Down through the centuries with the children of Israel, all the way to the gate of the New Testament was the shedding of blood. At the river Jordan, when John saw John the Baptist, when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, was blameless and spotless. He was pure and holy. He was without sin. But he died, but he was destined to die. He paid a debt he did not owe. That debt was my debt. That debt was your debt, a debt we couldn't pay. But I heard the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me by all, thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin have left a crimson stain, but he washes white as snow. From the Passover to the Lord's Supper, the scarlet stream continues. As Jesus gathered around the table with his disciples, he holds the cup and said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. At Calvary, the true Lamb of God was led to the slaughter. From the cross, the crimson stream, the crimson stream of blood trickled through 
every book in the New Testament. All the four gospels recorded the crucifixion. The blood is in the book of Acts and it flows through down to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1, part B of verse 5 to verse 6 says, Unto him that loved us and washed us in his own blood and have made us kings and priests unto God his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. The blood of the Son of God cannot be compared to any other blood. It cannot be compared to the blood of sheep, goat, bulls from Genesis to Malachi. It cannot be compared to the blood of all the baby boys killed by Pharaoh in Egypt in Satan's effort to kill baby Moses. The blood cannot be compared to the 22,000 cattle and the 120,000 sheep that Solomon killed at the dedication of the temple. The blood of Jesus cannot be compared to all the Jews. Antiochus Epiphanes the fourth killed during the inter intertestamental period. It cannot be compared to the blood of all the baby boys that Herod the Great slaughtered in an effort to kill the Messiah. It cannot be compared, and that is the blood of Jesus, to over a million Jews killed during the invasion, in the Roman invasion in AD 70. Josephus said it was 1.1 1 million, 1 .1 million Jews. It cannot be compared to the blood of all the saints that were slaughtered from the time of the apostle until the time of the papal power. The blood of Jesus cannot be compared to the blood of the wars, of all the wars in the history of this world. All these bloods put together cannot cleanse one stain of sin. But I drop by to let you know, brothers and sisters, one drop of Jesus' blood can forgive the sins of the whole world. The blood cannot be compared, brothers and sisters, because it is the only blood that can wash away our sins. Oh, it's not the blood of sheep, bulls, and goats. It's not the blood of Apostle Paul. It's not the blood of Apostle Peter. It's not the blood of Enoch. It's not the blood of Moses. It's not the blood of King David, who is a man after God's own heart. It's not the blood of Abraham, who is a friend to God. Not the blood of Elijah the prophet. Not the blood of John the Baptist. Not the blood of the Christian as they were torn apart by wild beasts. Not the blood of, not, not those blood brothers and sisters, but it is the blood of Jesus Christ. Would you be free from your burden of sin? Would you, or oh evil, a victory win? Would you be free from the passion and pride? Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There is power in the blood. There is wonder working power in the blood, in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that soothes my doubt and fears and it dries all my tears. The blood that gives strength from day to day, it will never Lose his power, give him praise and glory. The only blood that can cleanse the stain of sin from our soul is the blood of the Lamb of God. The blood can conquer cancer and heart disease. The blood can set you free from sin and shame. The blood can set you free from the fear of tomorrow and the guilt of the past. The blood can put you in the right relationship with God. Yes, brothers and sisters, it is that blood. It is the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I want you to picture Jesus as I close. He was arrested from his place of prayer in Gethsemane to his place of agony, the weeping pole. He walked about a mile and a half from the upper room to the Garden of Gethsemane. They took the Savior from his place of prayer in the wee hours of the morning 
they took him to Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin at Caiaphas' house. From Caiaphas, they dragged him to Pilate, Pilate's judgment hall. From Pilate, they took him to Herod Antipas, who sent him back to Pilate. But Pontius Pilate, who was the Roman prefect of Judea, sentenced him to death. The Savior was stripped naked and, and tied to a whipping pole, a flogging pole. Picture, brothers and sisters, the king of the universe, the giver of life, the savior of the world, the son of God tied to a whipping pole. He was flogged mercilessly by two selected strong men, one on either side as they landed the whip on his back. The whip that was used was called a cat or nine tail with nine branches at the end. At the end of each branches of the whip was a piece of lead. The nine cords or tail represent the nine life of a cat. Hence the reason why they call it cat or nine tail. The whip also left marks and scratches like that of a cat. As the whip would land on the Savior's back and the lead would sink in his flesh, and when they pulled back the whip, chunks of flesh would rip off his back. Tied to the whipping pole, Jesus received 39 lashes from the Roman soldier who was killed in, brutal, in the brutal business of execution. 39 lashes that mirrors the scarlet thread of the blood from Genesis to Malachi. One last for each book of the Old Testament. And the men took turns punishing him. They spat in his face. They punched him and, with the fist and asked, Who hit you? In merciless mockery, they placed on him a scarlet robe and a wooden staff in his hand as a king's scepter. In unmatched cruelty, they thrust a crown on his brow, a crown of thorn on his brow. And as the soldiers thrust the crown on his brow, Blood runs down his face. Then, he, then they led him to Golgotha, along a major thoroughfare outside the city wall. Upon arriving at Golgotha, they hammered him on a cross between two convicted criminals. Jesus died a gruesome, agonizing death. Yet, as the blood flowed down to the ground, the blood speaks to God, begging for mercy, saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. The prophet Isaiah said, He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid our face from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement or the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And the Bible says by his stripes we are healed. Oprah Winfrey, Joel Austin and T.D. Jakes said there are many ways to God. Jesus said I am the way, the truth and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. There are two roads. The broad way and the narrow way. The broad way is paved with the pleasures of this world, which leads to destruction and many that will find it. But the narrow way is paved with the blood of Christ and it is rough and thorny and few that will find it. If you are not covered by the blood of Christ, you are on the broad road. But if you are covered by his blood, you can say hallelujah this afternoon, you are on the way to glory. You see, Christian friends, you may do all, good, all the good in this world if you are not covered by the blood of Christ, you are lost. Rich people give billions of dollars in charity thinking that will secure them a place in the kingdom of God. 
The only way to the kingdom is through the blood. The question I want to ask us this afternoon is, have you allowed the Savior to apply his blood on the doorpost of your heart? If you have not, you need to do so now. For the Bible says, today is the accepted time. Today is the day of, day of salvation. If you hear his voice, had not your heart. There is a time I was walking contrary to the will of God. Living my life in sin, in earthly pleasure. Thinking I was having fun. But I was lost walking down the broad road. Thinking deep in sin, sinking to rise no more. But I thank God this afternoon that the blood of Jesus heard my despairing cry. He looked beyond my thoughts and thought and saw my needs. Hallelujah to the, to the Lamb of God this afternoon. There is power in the blood. Without the blood of Jesus, brothers and sisters, on the doorpost of our heart, we have no chance against the enemy of souls. The Bible says, he is as a roaring lion seeking for souls to devour. Jesus said, when the enemy of soul come, he come to steal, to destroy, and to kill. Satan will steal your joy or your peace of mind. He will rob you of your help, and eventually he will kill you. That is why the Bible says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God this afternoon is eternal life. Jesus come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. It does not matter how rich or how poor you are. It does not matter how educated or how unlearned you are. It does not matter how honorable or how powerful you are. If you are not covered by the blood of Christ, you are outside the kingdom of God. When we will stand finally before the supreme judge of the universe, where will you be? When we will stand finally before the judge of the universe, where will I be? Brothers and sisters, the blood of Jesus is so powerful. And it, the guarantee, the victory is so guaranteed that Enoch who went to heaven thousands of years before went to heaven on credit on the blood. And the resurrection of, the resurrection of Jesus Christ was the receipt to prove that the debt is paid in full. His death was the cause of our sin or our sin is the cause of his death and his resurrection was the proof that the debt is paid. Brothers and sisters, when the time will come to stand before the judge of the universe, where will you be? I plan to be on the right side. I plan to be among the sheep. I plan to be among those who will raise our hands and say, Lord, this is our God. We have waited for him. Lord, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. So this afternoon, I want to ask you, you who are here and you, you who are watching virtually, where will you be on judgment day? Where will you spend eternity? The provision has been made through the blood of Christ. And it is our duty this afternoon to say yes to Jesus. And if we don't, brothers and sisters, there is no way to polish it. It's two ways. Either you walk the narrow way or you walk the broad way. Only two ways. I have decided to follow Jesus and no turning back. The world is behind me and the cross is before me. What is your decision this afternoon? If it is your decision this afternoon, let me ask you to stand to your feet. And to you who are watching virtually, raise your hand or you can stand because God can see you. What is going on around us, if God will bring an end to it. People are living in fear. We cannot even hug each other anymore. And we don't know what tomorrow brings. Our only solution is the blood of Jesus Christ. So I want you to make a commitment to God today. That you will allow God to apply the blood of Jesus Christ on the doorposts of your heart. You will make a commitment that you will walk with God from today on. 
When you, when you are covered by the blood of the Lamb, God does not see you and your infallibility, but God sees the blood. That is why when the blood touched the mercy seat, the people who are outside of the temple receive forgiveness and cleansing. Where will you be? At this time, I will call our pastor. Pray, pray for us that we will seal, God will seal in us the decision and commitment to follow him.